Welcome to another edition of Lighting Alchemy, where I take you behind the scenes to show you my lighting setups, all thanks to my handy little iPhone. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I lit two different locations for one of my stock footage shoots. The first series of clips was shot in the bedroom, and I wanted it to take place during the morning and then at night. So with a couple of quick changes, I was able to get two different looks using the same setup. To create my day look, I flew an in-betweeny above the lamp and put it on a dimmer. This extended the light that the practical was giving me already, and brought it up to the level that I needed. Unfortunately, even with the barn doors, it still spilled everywhere, so I used a 2x3 solid to flag it off the wall. Next I took a tweeny and I bounced it into white foam core. If I went direct with the light, it would have not had the soft quality I was looking for, and I chose foam core because I wanted a little more punch to the bounce, and I wouldn't have gotten that if I used a different material. It's placed on the same side as the practical lamp, so that it will wrap around the talent and blend in with the light from the in-betweeny. I'm playing the practical as my key light in this setup. You'll also notice I have two more flags set on this light. The first one is flagging the bounce light off the lamp in the background. If it were not there, the lamp would have a shadow of its own, giving away that there is another light source in the room, and spoiling the illusion I'm creating. The second flag helps cut down the level of the bounce. Without it, light was just bouncing everywhere, making the image too flat for this particular setup. Where the light doesn't fall is just as important as where it does fall. And finally, I have a betweeny with half straw on it, shooting through some blinds hanging from a C-stand. The half straw is helping me to give a warm glow that is hitting the bed covers in the foreground, as if it's morning sun coming through the windows. And you'll also notice I have the shades completely drawn, and they're stopping any daylight that might be trying to get through from ruining the shot. And now on to the night shot. Not a lot of things have changed here. The betweeny now has full CTB on it to help give me the blue glow of night coming through the window. The in-betweeny remains unchanged from before. And here's where the biggest difference lies. The tweeny now has its doors pinched down a little more, and I took one of the flags and used it to cover up about half the card. Not only did this limit where the bounce was spilling onto, but it also lowered the light levels, decreasing the fill light, helping to sell the look of night. After being up all night working in bed, we joined this couple for an unpleasant breakfast. And here's how I lit all the shots that took place in the kitchen. I flew the in-betweeny high above and pointed it back down, raking across the table. This helped reinforce the light that was streaking through the window, but it played only on the table. I left it there as if it were sunlight coming through a window just outside of frame. Even though I was keeping the scene high key, I still wanted there to be some shadows to help define the image. So I placed a 4x4 floppy just out of frame to cut down the amount of bounce light that was being returned off of the wall and the white door that is behind the floppy. While the in-betweeny gave me a nice dramatic look for the scene, it wasn't appropriate for this particular shot, and it wasn't the most flattering to the talent. So I brought in a diva light and put it through a 4x4 frame of full grid. This gave me a light source that was large enough and soft enough so that it blended in with the in-betweeny and felt like it could be the sun coming through another window. Keeping it to the 3 quarters front position allowed it to wrap nicely around the talent's face. The most important part of this setup was controlling where the light was not coming from. I used black visqueen to cover up all the windows that were out of the shot. This allowed me to keep all the light coming from one direction in the scene. To complete the lighting of the scene, I put two source 4s through the window to create the light spilling in the background. And here we are outside. This flag was put here to help stop the light breeze from shaking the light. The shaking light made it look like there was a pool outside, not the effect I was after. While I could have used one source 4, I chose two instead, and separated them so that it replicated light being broken up by tree branches. While I'm precise in my levels and ratios, I like to be more messy with accent lights like these source 4s. Natural light is never perfect, and little touches like these help to make the light I bring in feel more authentic. I covered the window with half CTO to help correct the daylight coming in through the window, and it also warmed up the source 4s to help give them a warm glow of the morning sunlight. The last part of this lighting recipe is the 8x8 Ultra Bounce that I flew just above the window. It was raised high enough so that it was out of the shot, but low enough to completely block the sun from coming through the window for the entire day. And here's the sun that the 8x8 is blocking, that would have been coming through the window, as well as the two trees which break up the sunlight as it passes behind them. And that's my lighting setup. You can ensure the production of future videos by supporting this content through the purchasing of my camera and lighting tutorials at thecinematographerseries.com, or by buying my stock footage at ryanewalters.com. Until next time, get out there and shoot.